working with Edwin and a number of other partners on a project that we're calling the Suwannee Headwaters Project. Um, so you can't really see on this map here, but Okefenokee National Wildlife Refuge is a big blob that's over here. Um, it has over 110 miles of water trails. Um, so our goal is to try to connect the Okefenokee uh, to the Suwannee River Wilderness Trail, um, which starts about 70 miles downstream. Um, so many, many people want to kayak from or paddle from Okefenokee uh, and continue down the Suwannee, but there's not many opportunities um, to camp uh, along the 30 miles of Georgia. Um, section of the river. Uh, so our goal is to try to acquire uh, property along the river corridor. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know how many people can see it from here. I can't yeah. see from where I am. Yeah. Is the yellowish square at the top of what you're pointing to the state of Georgia? Yeah, this is Georgia. And this is Florida? And this is Florida. I, I, I'm probably the only one who's happened to for, for the last presentation. I, I know rivers don't respect political boundaries, but it's helped for me to know whether what you're talking about is in the state of Georgia or whether it's the state of Florida. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, most of the, almost all of the land in Georgia, um, the 30 miles of river corridor is owned by large timber companies. Um, so we're working with those timber companies with the conservation fund in order to acquire the land and hopefully sell it to another timber company with an underlying conservation easement. And the, cons the conservation fund has already achieved this on one property um, and we're looking to try to conserve uh, 10 miles from Fargo up to the Okefenokee National Wildlife <coughs> Boundary. Um, so then, once that land is acquired, we would be able to put in campsites. Um, and we're thinking primitive campsites that could potentially um, turn into river camps like what the Suwannee River Wilderness Trail um, would build as well. And um, uh, within Okefenokee, there's also uh, water control structures that are located along the Suwannee Sill. They're along the western edge of the swamp. And they were built, it's a five mile long earthen berm that was built in the 60s in order to um, reduce the number of wildfires. In the 1950s, 80% um, of the swamp and thousands of acres of timberlands were, were burned. And it was thought that this would help reduce the number of wildfires, uh, but they, determined that in the 1980s that it wasn't working. Um, so a f about a decade ago, they were able to um, put holes in the sill to restore the hydrology, but there wasn't enough money uh, to remove the water control structures. So that's another portion of the project, um, it, to remove those structures because they're, they're in disrepair and they're clogged with debris. And in order to um, continue down the river, paddlers have to portage over it, or at certain water levels, they're able to go through, but not the safest idea. Um, we're also planning to build ADA accessible kayak ramps um, within the refuge um, at the four main entrances. Um, and those are the improvements within the National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, so we're thinking of putting one, two, three, three campsites along the Georgia side, and then once we cross the border into Florida, we'll put three to four primitive campsites in order to formalize the areas to help reduce the effect of waste um, on the river. Uh, so once that is all complete, it would be a network of, approxim of approximately 350 miles of river trails that would all be connected. Um, so it would be a super trail. Awesome. Um, and that's our project. We're looking for funding um, right now. We're going to hopefully submit a proposal to Deepwater Horizon. 
Um, and we're looking at other funding sources as well. So, if you know of any big pots of money, please let us know. I'm just glad you entertain any questions. I, I told you about the Six River Camp. I forgot to tell you. The Six River Camp was at Fletcher's Landing down in the Lower Swanee National Wildlife Refuge, and we ran out of money. Uh, I was back in uh, when there was a budget crisis in 2009, like, I think it was in 2010, and the funding was pulled, and it just never came back. So hopefully it'll come back. We still have 10 acres within the refuge. The district owned about 160 acres that they have bought for the refuge because we could acquire it quicker and faster, and then at some point in time they would buy it from us. They bought all but 10 acres, and we kept the 10 acres for River Camp. So hopefully at some point in time, because the last 22 miles of the uh, paddle along the Swanee, uh, there is no place to camp. You have to paddle it all in one day. So hopefully we'll get that uh, River Camp built at Fletcher's Landing within the Lower Swanee National Wildlife Refuge. And it may be part of this deep water horizon project or pro headwaters project. That we, Apparently. You know, if we can come up with funding for that. But anyway, I'd be glad to answer any questions on the sw paddling the Swanee River. Yes, sir. So y'all got $10 million to build the trail, right? That's correct. So. In Georgia, we have, well, we won't say zero funding for water trails. We do have recreational trails grants that we can apply for. But my question is, where did the political clout come from to get $10 million for a water trail? I will say it came from our executive director, who was Jerry Scarborough. The district had a, a, a reserve pot of money that we had sold timber revenues from our properties. Uh, as we thin timber and we used that for the district's portion. Uh, Bob Ballard, who was the uh, Deputy Secretary for Land and Water Re Land Resources at DEP, he was part of the group that came up with the idea and he sold it to Secretary David Struess, who sold it to, Sec uh, to Governor Bush, and we had legislators that went out on the trip. One of the things that we do at the district, and we'll be doing this in October, is we can we have a legislative educational trip. We carry we do fun things. We do an educational thing with the legislators in the morning. We carry them paddling in the afternoon to show them the rivers and the springs. And of course, right now we're getting a lot of money for springs funding, and we show them projects that we're doing with springs funding and, and some of our land management money we get from the legislature. That has been so effective for us is carrying the. We don't have that many legislators go, but we have a lot of their staff go, and that's who makes the decision. But we, you know, we had one uh, trip that we had 60 folks on, and you know that has been very has paid off big bucks for us. You know, carrying them out, we got them on a bus for for 30 minutes to travel to the first venue, and we go over our projects and what we're doing, and then we show them a project, and then the, from there to lunch. We, we got them for another 30 minutes on the bus and got them as a captive audience. And so we were able to lobby them and talk to them about projects and, and the need for funding. And then we uh, do some type of fun activity. And most of us do paddle trips on the river looking at springs and, and the rivers. Paul, yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I'll take Joe's follow-up follow question. Uh, follow-up question. Do y'all have an estimate of how many people use the Wilderness Trail each year? I haven't gotten a recent number from State Parks, and uh, to be honest with you, I don't know. Uh, now, the, as the partnership with the district, the district built them in State. Jerry Scarborough, who was our executive director of that guy, was a great salesperson. He sold DEP into managing those. We leased them to DEP, State Parks, and they actually managed those with no cost to the district. But I'm going to tell you, pardon me? Yes, it's, it's the same as Georgia's EPA, but we call it in Florida DEP, Department of Environmental Protection. State Parks, he, he sold them on taking those and managing those, and, and it's been a great partnership. Yes, sir? Every time you mention DEP tonight, you refer to the state of Florida. Correct? That's correct. DEP is the state of Florida. And is everything you talked about pretty much tonight been within the state of Florida? Yes, we do not operate in the state of Georgia. But what she's talking about is largely in the state of Georgia. 
Uh, most of them. Yeah, yeah. Now there's about uh, 25 or uh, there's about 30 miles that's in the state of Florida. Yeah. But it's been a great really partnership in the. Uh, yes, sir. Do you have any feeling for how many, what percentage of your uh, visitors are local within two, three, four hour drive, and what percentage are from far away coming down? Are you drawing people in from out of state? Yes, we are. And the only reason I know that, I don't, I can't tell you how many because I don't know the numbers. I just have a, I used to get the numbers every month from DEP and, and our board decided they didn't want to, uh, let me tell you. Let me back up for a moment and tell you, Water Management District is, is not a state agency. We're an agency of the state. Now, I can't explain to you the difference, as I was telling Joe earlier. I think it was Joe earlier. Our, we're a, an independent, quasi-state government uh, agency that our governing board members, which has nine, is appointed by the governor. And we have taxing authority. And, of course, our taxing authority doesn't barely don't even take care of our operating experience. So we get some subsidy from the legislature and, and some other funds. But uh, so all of our lands is, is you know owned by the governing board and the governing board there. Now we get a lot more oversight from DEP and the governor's office in recent years. So uh, but we have that, that great partnership with them. And uh, well, is, is tourism a selling point as far as trying to get your legislature involved? Yes, it's the economic development. We actually had, we did two studies in putting this together. Was One was a, a, a environmental study where we actually hired a, a, an environmental uh, firm to come in and look at the impacts. Number two was we actually hired from Florida State University from their uh, hotel and restaurant management. We actually... They did a follow-up study to one they had done earlier about the economic benefits of this, this project. And, and I can tell you the number of canoe liveries have doubled on the river. And uh, I know that. And I get a lot of folks call me from the that are paddling, ask questions. I get a lot of calls from, from up north. And uh, it's just surprising, you know, where people come. People come from Washington State to paddle the Swanee River. Well, they're coming from New York to paddle the Swanee River. Or and, Montreal. Uh, yes. And we all actually own another piece of property, and you're talking about the economic benefits. Uh, it's called Goose Pasture. It's out on the Wasissa River. And if you've been there, with Georgia Wilderness Society, probably. Have you been there with Georgia Wilderness Society? <laughs> With a Gail Smith? Lamar Phillips. Oh, okay, Lamar Phillips, yes. Same group. But anyway, Goose Pasture, uh, we have, you fill out a, it's a self check in, you have a permit there you fill out. And it is incredible how many people we have from Europe that fill those out. It's just, you know, some of the, I've been involved in ecotourism for all about 30 plus years. And for every 70 tourists you bring in, additional tourists you bring in, creates one job in the community. And, uh, you know, I spent about 10 years in the Chamber of Commerce business and introduced ecotourism to our community. And uh, one of the things that rural communities have a hard time, they spend tons of money trying to recruit a business there, but ecotourism is right there. Yes, it doesn't have a lot of high paying jobs, but I grew up in a rural community. We don't have a lot of skilled laborers there, but tourism you can have an immediate effect. I mean, you can really change your economy with tourism in a, in a matter of a three or four years. Any other questions? Thank you for the opportunity and have a great paddle tomorrow. I assume you're paddling from, are you paddling from Madison Blue to? We're going from uh, uh, Sullivan Launch. Belleville, down. Belleville Road down to Madison Blue. Okay. That's on my bucket list to paddle. That's the one section of the Whitfield Coochie I've not paddled. But. Join us! Join us! No, I would like to do that, but I unfortunately I can't. I've had two opportunities, you know, to get paid to paddle this week. And the one tomorrow, and then I have one uh, Friday to go over to Northwest Florida Water Management District and paddle with a group of legislators, and I can't do either one of them. It's a hard life. I know, it's a tough life, and somebody <laughs> has to do it. People keep asking me, when are you going to retire? I get paid to do my hobbies. Why not want to quit? So, anyway. Have a good paddle. Yes, ma'am. You did a beautiful job on that tip with that $10 million. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm jealous. We're getting there.
Yes. <laughs> and actually, Joe, what was the name of the river that we were talking about in Rome, Georgia, that I've sent all the information to? That uh, the uh, Etowah News Mountain. There was a group, there was a, a Mr. Montgomery, Joe Joe Montgomery. Montgomery. He called me. He grew up in Lake City. His brother I know very well. He had called me and I sent him all the plans for the Wilderness Trail that we had, and they're looking at doing something up in that area similar to what we did here. So. And we have the cash to do it. Yeah. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Katie. Uh,